The blood of God. God has blood? Yes. Apparently, at least I can say it is legitimate to speak that way. Jesus has made it possible to speak that way. And the Apostle Paul does speak that way. The blood of God. <laughs> Look with me at Acts chapter 20. Acts chapter 20. This is a scene where the Apostle Paul brings together a group of pastors and other church leaders. He's not at the churches themselves. He's, at the, he's with the leaders. And in addressing them, it's a beautiful passage, would encourage you to read it, read it through. Paul is probably never going to see these guys ever again. This is his mm, last will and testament, his final words to these people. He, he may never have another chance. And he commends the church to them. He entrusts the church to them. He says this, verse 28, Acts chapter 20, verse 28. Pay careful attention to yourselves and to all the flock in which the Holy Spirit has made you overseers. Do you see that? And that's a good general word because it's not a word that we generally use as a title. And so it kind of lends itself to uh, point us to anyone in a leadership position like many of you hold. But specifically, these are elders in the church, most likely official, official ordained, officially ordained elders. And so he says, the Holy Spirit has made you overseers. Why? To care for the church of God. And here he comes. Here he comes. Ready? Here he comes. Which he obtained with his own Blood. With his own blood. You see it? God bought the church with his own blood. Jesus' deity and his humanity, his godhood and humanhood are so united in the person of Jesus that very often the language that is usually reserved for God is sometimes used for Jesus' humanity. And some things that he does in his humanity is applied to his deity. And it's often very interchangeable, and the Apostle Paul eloquently does it here, and he speaks of, <laughs> he dares to speak of the blood of God. We can get theological and say it is such a magnificent thing that to God now there is an element of humanness because Jesus wedded himself to humanity when he came to die for you and me. And along that line is the same language here <laughs> that God spilled his blood, that God bought the church with his own blood. And there's, and, and, and you know, so these days we are talking about leadership. I am talking about leadership in the church. I said this, this is probably a reference to an official title given in the church. Well, this definitely applies to pastors who are elders. Elders, of course, who hold that title, it applies to you as well. And so it applies very personally to those of you who are in those positions. It also applies by extension, a, a legitimate extension to all of you who hold any influence on anybody else in the body of God. Whether that's your husband, wife, or children, or friends, a fellow brother in Jesus Christ, though we are equal in some way to as much as you pour influence into that person's life, this passage applies to you. And in principle, it applies to everybody who ever touches anyone who belongs to God. Because you must know when you touch that brother or sister, you touch that person with your words, with your looks, with your hands, with your presence, you are touching the blood-bought child of God, the apple of God's eye. Understand that. Is that the way you see 
your pastor. <laughs> I don't know why I throw myself in all of a sudden, but is that the way you see your students? Is that the way that we see one another? It's a collective conviction, isn't it? When I look at you, do I look at you as a blood-bought group? A group in which the very blood of King Jesus flows. That's the way the Bible speaks. We are related by blood. And the most precious blood there is, the blood of God. In the light of the fact that we have been bought not by silly temporary things like silver or gold, The most precious things on earth are silly and worthless compared to the worth of the blood of King Jesus. And that's what each child of God in the church of God has. That ought to transform the way that we look at one another, the way that you look at me, the way that I look at you, the way that you look at your children. Before you speak that harsh word, would you remind yourself, this person is blood-bought with the blood of God. I think it'll change the way you act. I think it'll it'll change, transform the way you live and your perspective on life as a whole. It's my challenge to you then. To see one another as blood-bought children of God. And as the Lord calls into you into positions of leadership in Lord's Day School, some of you will be deacons in the church, some of you will be elders in the church. Pay careful attention to yourselves. What the, your people will need the most from you is your own closeness with God and to the flock in which the Holy Spirit has made you overseers. God has put you in that place. And you may think, who am I to presume to be a leader? No, if you are a leader, God has put you there. And yes, he has made you care for those that he bought with his own blood. (laughs) Wow! And you may say, God, did you really know what you were doing to interest these valuable people to someone like me. And you know, sometimes with your children, you feel overwhelmed like that. When the weight of the responsibility really settles on you, when the weight of the responsibility of caring for the church really settles on you, then you can be overwhelmed and say, God, were you really thinking straight? I know that's a little bit rash, and I really shouldn't speak this way, but were you thinking straight when you put me in this position? And God says, yes, I want to showcase my grace through you. I want to show that I can cause my blood-bought children to grow through a broken vessel like you. And as I've done in you, I want to do it in them. So come. Come and be used by God on behalf of of those he has bought with his own blood, the very blood of God. With the eyes of our spirit wide open, let's behold together the beauty of our King Jesus. Let's sing.
That's what we are here to do. And though I'm sure many of us are not physically standing in awe to behold your beauty. And then to follow your leading in laying our lives down for the sheep that you have graciously placed in our care. We celebrate you, Jesus, in the name of our great shepherd, we pray, amen.